alliteration in my mind every time I do a, a solo one. Um, but I did it again. But it may, it'll make sense as we go along. Um, thanks very much for tuning in, as always, to YouTube or wherever you uh, listen to it. Um, I want to thank uh, Stephen James Smith for coming on last week to chat about his poetry and music and performing and a lot of stuff actually we got through if you haven't listened to it or watched it yet you definitely should Stephen's a, a, a proper uh, dub and a, a very very um, big talent when it comes to uh, to poetry and and what he does with uh, collaborations with people as well it's absolutely brilliant and um, we did have our first no show um, when it came to when it comes to recording uh, which was supposed to be it's Saturday now it's supposed to be on Thursday evening but there was a no show so um, I was kind of planning on a solo one in the kind of near future. And this kind of fell into place quite well, uh, as you will um, hear as we go along. So um, I'm looking forward to it. I was going to record it tomorrow and then I'm just sitting around, you know, you're just sitting around and you're like, so what am I going to do? What, will I watch a film? No, well, I did. And then I decided I'll just record a podcast, get it done. And then I can take my Sunday off then, which is, it's all the one, but really, um, I didn't really want. I, I just watched In Cold Blood again, which is a, a film from the sixties, uh, based on the, the the true crime that was written about by Truman Capote, and it's, it's a great film, by the way. But it's heavy, obviously, and so uh, I didn't want to watch another film. So here we are. Um, the nostalgia bit, yeah, I think, like we all t- have nostalgic, you know, memories through. A lot of it is through films for me. A lot of it's through music, uh, but then there's obviously the memories that we have growing up um, people have might have had of them getting married. And I kind of, I was wondering what nostalgia would be, what, like what it, does it have to be over, over 10 years for it to be nostalgic? Can it be like two years ago? Can you be nostalgic about something? I don't think I can be nostalgic about something two years ago. So when I was thinking about, it, I was, I was thinking maybe 15, 20 years of something that I'd be nostalgic about. But I think a lot of what I've written down, a lot of what I kind of want to talk about is is 20 to 30 years, really. And, you know, when we talk about it's different when we talk about memories within our lives. But when we talk about art or, you know, forms of art, I think a lot of our, our uh, nostalgia comes to when we've initially found that art form, you know, um, you know, like, say, f- I guess you really start seeing and remembering films when you're six or seven years of age, maybe. And then music a couple of years after that, maybe about, you know, I'd say I was around nine or 10 and I really started liking music and getting into bands that I wouldn't really listen and listen to now. So I think nostalgia has been kind of around over the last couple of a uh, couple of weeks. And I, I'm I'm sure most of the people, uh, you know, tuning in um, are aware of Stranger Things. I've never seen Stranger Things, but I'm aware of the concept of it. And it's very 80s and it's reminding, you know, people of a certain age of their, you know, their time in the 80s and maybe the fashion and uh, and the the art and everything that was going on around the time. And um, uh, I heard this week I was in the gym and uh, on the stereo, on comes Kate Bush's Running Up the Hill. Um, and it's it's an amazing song. I've always loved it. I'm uh, you know I love Kate Bush. She's an absolutely amazing artist, amazing songwriter. But I was kind of like you know, and Martin, if he's listening to this, like it's not a dig, you know. But I was kind of thinking, oh, like you listen, to, you watched what episode of Stranger Things? Now you're like a Kate Bush fan, you know. And obviously that's not really, but you know he likes the song. Maybe he hadn't heard of it before, but. Um, it's number eight in the US at the moment because of Stranger Things. It's the highest she's ever been in the US, Kate Bush, which is which is really incredible when you think of it as a song that, that came out in, I think it was 85. Um, for it to come out like 27 years later and get to number eight in America through a, a TV show on Netflix, it's, it's um, I mean, it's, it, it's brilliant that that can happen because it can reach a further audience, a wider audience of people can not only maybe go back into Kate Bush's, um, you know, songbook, but then, you know, kind of find out about the people that were around her at the time and, you know, whether they were in the same genre as her or, you know, maybe something slightly to slightly more guitar sounding or whatever. It, it introduces people to kind of a, a different style and different types of music that they may not have had. So, it's it's it, that that was kind of in my mind and you know when i heard running up the hill in the gym i was like that's that's pretty cool and stuff so 
I was thinking of um, the, the kind of uh, the manipulation of nostalgia and how, um, for instance, I was talking to my friend who uh, is really big on Jurassic Park, and we all know Jurassic Park came out in 19, I think it was 1994. I, I, I saw it in the cinema. My mom took us to see it in the cinema, probably in Kulak, but it was in Dublin anyway. Um, and, you know, I, look, I was, if it was 94, it could have been 93, actually. Maybe it was 93. So say I'm 11 and you're watching that, you've seen you've seen these dinosaurs walking around and it, look, it's incredible, you know. That that um, that was the, the newest technology at the time is what they used for the dinosaurs. And some guy came to Steven Spielberg and said, look, I've got, so I say some guy so disrespectfully, but I, I just can't think of what his name was. But he was working on this thing for a long, long time. And he said, I've got this for the dinosaurs. We could use it. So Spielberg went along and looked at it and thought, that's amazing. Like if we can use that technology, it'd be, it'd look incredible. So that's how they, they figured it out, you know, and indeed it looked, it looked unbelievable. Okay. So that's, you know, 93, 94. Um, the new one came out yesterday, I think, or maybe it was last week, but you know, it's, it's, it's just the way <laughs> the reviews are, are pretty, uh, you know, appalling, but I liked it. I think a lot of the, the the Jurassic Park and the Jurassic World, as they've used for the the, the latest trilogy, is is it's a well, it's not full on manipulation of nostalgia because I think it still draws kids in. They want to see dinosaurs on screen. I do think there's a certain type of of nostalgia manipulation of nostalgia going on. I think there is with um with Star Wars. You know, they're belting out the Star Wars and stuff because. I, I, like, actually, I just, I'm just trying to think. Is it, compl- in, Star Wars is different, right, than Jurassic Park. Is it completely aimed at the people who loved it then? Is there like eight or nine-year-olds that are really into Star Wars now? That 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 seems implausible to me. Obviously, not completely plausible. There's obviously eight or nine-year-olds who are, but I mean, in a on a grand scale, like they might have been when this started, you know, the whole Star Wars thing started. I'm not so, I'm not sh- so sure if it was. And we're always led to believe that everything or maybe not even led to believe in our minds, what we watched when we were kids was like incredible because it's what we were seeing for the first time. You know, it's like um, I'll I'll just I have a list of films here. Okay, that these are the as I was writing this podcast, I didn't want to write out a load of load of films, but I'm going to write I'm going to read out the bad and I'm going to read out the good. Okay, of of what I remember. And then I'm going to say why I thought they were bad and good. So the bad films that you know, like I think are bad, by the way, this is just my opinion. So, you know, you're, if you think it's good, I'm glad for you. I just giving you my opinion. Uh, when I liked them when I was younger and now when I've seen bits or all of them in, you know, since I was maybe 20, uh, the bad ones are the Ghostbusters, uh, the Goonies. I'm going to get slack for that. Uh, flack, not slack. Um, Back to the Future, Jurassic Park and E.T., I had it eating at the end there actually because it was on the other day and I had it on in the background on the TV and I was reading, but I had so I had the TV on mute. But every time I looked up, I thought that looks terrible. The 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 little the alien himself, obviously, but the but the the special effect, effects of the bikes in the air and all that. And I know they were working off, didn't they? I know, and I'm working off 2022's effects. And saying that, <laughs> the people who know me will know that I don't watch films that tend to have a lot of special effects in it. They're just not, you know, I do, of course, watch some, but I, I don't seek out uh, Star Wars or the new Jurassic Park films or the Matrix films or, you know, I, they're not my my kind of scene. So when I do see uh, special effects now, it's it, actually it's few and far between when I do see them. But the good then, I have Dumb and Dumber. Now, Dumb and Dumber, I'm, uh, when I bring it back to it, it came out in 94, we probably saw it in 95 or 96, myself and my two brothers. And I'd still sit down and watch that, no problem. Back to, you know, front to back, uh, quote every line, um, laugh in all the places I used to laugh. Uh, Happy Gilmore, some people might be surprised a little bit about that because of my crusade against Adam Sandler recently on the podcast. But um, it, that's that's a brilliant, brilliant film. It's That's, you know, Adam Sandler has done some very good drama, you know, with Punch Drunk Love and, and even Uncut Gems, but Happy Gilmore as a comedy film is really good. Terminator 2 I have in there as well. Again, special effects from Terminator 2 still hold up. Um, 
where I guess so did the, the ones from Jurassic Park, but Back to the Future's look terrible, ET's look terrible. So Terminator 2 stands up. Um uh, Stir Crazy. <laughs> Stir Crazy is like I don't know if people have seen Stir Crazy. So Richard Pryor um and Gene Wilder uh play two guys or, that go to prison and they try and escape. That's uh, the premise of it. My uh, my grandmother, ma'am, um recorded it for us innocently. Um, not knowing that it was an 18s uh, film and we were, I don't know, I guess it was around 12, 13. It was like the language, you know, was incredible. Um, but, you know, it was it was great. And I watched it since and, you know, not too long ago, I watched it and I still think it, it's a cool film. So, like, when I talk about something like Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters is not a good film. It's, a ter- it's actually a really, really terrible film. As you go back to it and watch it, like, objectively as a... As, Try and watch it as something you haven't seen before. It's a really bad film. And like I have Jurassic Park in the bad um, because the storyline is dreadful. There's, the, the screenplay is shocking. But you can go back and watch that as, a, as an action film and think, oh, that's good. But I wouldn't. But Ghostbusters is not in the same thing. I don't know. I'd say the same bracket. I think it falls apart when it's just terrible. The Goonies, all right. You know, it's just a group of kids going around there. They find some treasure. We know the story to it. Again, it's really um, like it's I always feel bad saying it's poorly acted when it's a group of, you know, younger people in the in the roles. But it is poorly acted and you kind of can't get away from it. And it's bothersome to me when I see something poorly acted. And Back to the Future, I think, is a little bit of a is one for me that I just don't like and I never liked. And I remember my two brothers liked it. They were always watching it. So maybe I have a thing against it for that reason. Uh, Jurassic Park and E.T. have always, already mentioned um, Terminator 2, we saw maybe, I don't know when it came out, maybe I was 13, 14 when I watched it. Um, brilliant effects, great action, um, great soundtrack. Uh, there was a lot going on for it. Uh, it but the, the effects in particular were of, of, you know, there was nothing like it before. And there's, like I say, they still hold up as brilliant special effects. They haven't been completely eclipsed by it. So I think with manipulation comes like releasing stuff like the Ghostbusters. In newer films coming out, you know, um, this kind of to to play into the nostalgia that you have for something already because you used to think it was great. That that's a little bit bothersome for me, and I tend to push against it. And I was kind of giving my friend a hard time for going seeing Jurassic Park yesterday, but you know, she was she, she likes Jurassic Park, and that's you know, uh, you know, and she she enjoyed the 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 film. She she didn't really because I was having a bit of a dig. She didn't really go into it too much, but she did say they had the old score and the old cast. That seemed to be the selling point, which says to me that it wasn't that good of a film. But anyway, regardless. So, yeah, you can see, like, I hope you can see what I mean, but it's like idea of manipulation, like getting as many, you know, uh, sequels out of things as, as they possibly can and bringing them out again and talk. I don't know if someone said to me they're talking getting the Goonies back together, was it? Or was it? Was it Goonies or? Yeah, it might have been. Talk of getting someone back together, and I'm just kind of thinking, well, that's the same thing as was before, you know. So there's another thing for uh, a nostalgia for music. And, and, you know, with me, everybody knows that um, my favorite band's The Beatles. Anybody who's listened to, to the podcast or anybody who knows me well knows that my favorite band's The Beatles. But if I was to round out the top, three bands it would be the Beatles Nirvana and Radiohead um Nirvana probably number two because of when they came along uh, for for me they blew everything else out of the water and um so a few years ago there was this kind of thing around uh never mind when it was recorded because of the way it was recorded it was quite a low sounding uh, album so even if you turn it up quite high it still sounded it did you know wasn't pumping it out or whatever so with the with the way you know music goes now with uh, streaming services and stuff, they've been able to remaster the the albums and stuff and clean them up, and obviously Nirvana are able to lift the 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 sound. But what I what I noticed about uh, Nevermind um, when I went back to it with the the cleaner sound with the remasters was that the 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 brilliant songs on a plane and uh, drain you and breed and in bloom all like absolutely like it's incredible that they're all on that one album but 
it doesn't sound like the way I used to think Nirvana sounded or the way I thought it sounded in the first place, that album in particular. So like when I'm talking, when I, when you listen back to Nirvana or never mind, I should say it's very, very clean and it's not punky or grungy or whatever way, whatever genre they wanted to fall in or they were, you know, what they were labeled with, I suppose. And it's kind of, not that it's disappointing. You can't have an album with that many good songs or that, you know, such a strong set of songs be a disappointment, but you can certainly listen back and go, you want a bit more bite. And when you listen to Nirvana live, you go onto YouTube and look up all those, those songs like in bloom live, the power in, in the, in a three piece band to be able to create the sound they do on stage and how, how dirty and distorted and everything is. It's such a disappointment to listen back to the album. Then it sounds silly to say that about an album that sold millions and millions of copies and made them one of the greatest bands of all time. But what I, you know, in my, in my, um, remembrance of the album for when it came out it was it was heavy as anything that I'd heard you know um and and I and it blew a lot of stuff out the water which I'll talk about but then you when, when I listened to Bleach which was their song was sorry which was their album before it or In Utero which was their song or that their album uh, their last album they're the ones with the real power is like it's you stick on never mind the remastered version and then put on in utero afterwards the the difference in the in the, the power of the music is 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 mad you know that the production on it is, is so much different and never mind was the one that made them you know as big as they as big as they were at the time um on the back of you know smells like teens bird and stuff so it's it is kind of messes with your mind a little bit that nostalgia of of having I had a tape that a friend of uh, my brother's gave him. And then I took the tape and started listening to it and really got into Nirvana. And it just, it seemed so like, you know, the Sex Pistols of the time, only with better songs. But then you listen to it back now and it's like, it sounds very, I wouldn't say very poppy, but there's a much more of a pop element when you listen to it. Now he was, he was, in, Kirk Cobain was inspired by a lot of pop bands, including the Beatles, but it's not how I remember it. I still love the album, by the way. But I would definitely, where as some people might draw a line and think, right, Nirvana uh, equals, you know, never mind, because that's what made them. I will always be Nirvana. I will always, the first album I pick up is a neutral because this, that's the part of how I remember, or not even how I remember, how I rem want to remember Nirvana to be like. And that's just one example. So then I was thinking about, I was thinking about other examples of, uh, you know, they say you give up on new music when you're 26. Apparently, that's the age where you start just listening to your old stuff and you don't really like hunt stuff. Out. Although I will say I was listening to a band called Idols the other day. If anybody knows them, bloody hell, they're they're pretty exceptional band. But they're probably the first new band I've listened in, in years. But so th here's some like these some, some of these bands were around the time I was thinking that are today, you know, when I was 20. 22 23 and you know still drinking and going to nightclubs but coming back and turning on mtv and there was mtv2 i think it was and and there was like uh you know these bands who i thought not at the time think they were great by any measure but there were bands that i kind of listened to and um maybe have a, an album by one or two of them and like here's just some here's just some i i remembered so kaiser chiefs most people know them i guess razor light the feeling the cooks uh hard fi and you know, people probably pick, you know, Kaiser Chiefs out there as, as a band they'd know more than others. Raised like still probably a couple of good songs. The Feeling, The Cooks and Hard Fight, they're all terrible. If you listen to them now, like I just listened to clips of them earlier on after writing these uh, band names down. They're so dated sounding. Um, something's after coming up on my screen. Uh, yeah, so they, they sound, they sound so of their time, you know, and you, and you don't like to think like the noughties was like bands were of their time in the noughties, but of course they were. I mean, it's like any other decade, you know, but there's, there was, there was a, there was a whole, like I'd even throw news in there, even though they're still performing and they're still, but they're still doing that whole operatic queen stuff. That's really, you know, weak enough for me, but that's just, again, me, uh, my opinion, but yeah, the, the, there was a level of bands then that were always on. And I was like, no, they're okay. Yeah, they're all right. And now I just listen to go there. Crap. I don't hold that many, bands from that era and uh, like in high esteem at, at all I'm trying, like, 
I guess Coldplay, uh, you know, for the first three albums were very good. They were around that time. Um, but there's not a huge amount. Like, you know, obviously I mentioned Radiohead, but Radiohead started in the 90s. It's different. They've gone all the way through and they're changed all the time. But I guess it's like, which isn't really new nostalgia, but a lot of bands do not change and they just fade away. But it's the bands that change all the time, like the Beatles in the 60s or Nirvana did or Queen did. They, with each album, it was like a new project, uh, you know, that it, it it moved them on to something, a, a different genre sometimes. And a lot of the bands, when you hear the bands perform, like, um, like Bruce Springsteen's always doing the same stuff. I don't get Bruce Springsteen, you know, and like Bon Jovi have always done the same thing. They never tried anything new. It's like they're in the safe, they have their fans in the safe space, whereas other bands are like, I guess they're not thinking so much of fans and money rather than thinking about, you know, keeping it interesting for themselves. And, you know, these bands, you know, the feeling, the kooks, hard fight all fell away because they had no, they had a, a bat, an album or two in them. And then that was it. Like, you know, um, I'll probably throw Kasabian in there as well. Actually, there's probably, actually, if I went over, I've got a, a lot of CDs over in the corner here. I'd say I could pick half of them out and throw them in the bin now. I wouldn't miss miss any of them. I wouldn't care. I wouldn't know 90% of the songs on each album. But obviously, there'd be a whole group of stuff that I keep as well. But let me just get the ad in here while we're on a on a roll. So, Fusion Training Center, Monksland Athlone. A place to train in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, kickboxing, martial arts, and CrossFit. A great atmosphere with experienced coaches and a real sense of community. If you want to join the team, find us on Facebook at Fusion Training Center or drop in for a chat. Fusion Training Center, train like a warrior. See, it's easier when someone's not on the screen looking at you, you see, because you're trying to hurry up. You don't want to leave them sitting there. Um, I'm very thirsty. So another thing that made me move, like nostalgia works in a, in in strange ways so when i was before um nirvana came along i was very much ro- guns and roses metallica i had like a kind of just a small cassette um box where i could keep my tapes um and I, you know i go back and listen to that stuff now uh, or if i hear i don't really go back and listen to it really when i, when I hear it on radio or, or you know comes up on something on television like I find Guns N' Roses music has not held up. I find Metallica's music for the most part has not held up. Now I'm saying they've not held up. Obviously there's still a few songs by each band that are insane and, you know, brilliant, but they're still of their time. There's nothing that's um, jumped forward and you still say, well, that could be released now. I don't think, and it's funny, you could say when you talk about Nevermind, you could probably say that they could be released now because they're slightly cleaner than what's on in row, but for Guns N' Roses and Metallica, I just don't think they hold up, and it's, I don't know, like, when you see Axl Rose, you know, I don't know, maybe it's because of the way he dressed, even when he was on the stage, he, I don't know if people have seen Axl Rose on stage, but he, he used to wear, like, bicycle shorts and these, like, t-shirts, three, three th- sizes too big for him, and just big Doc Martens and, like, this headband, and he just... He was of his time. And um, I know he's still a performer now, and he's obviously not running around in those <laughs> shorts and stuff. But um, what's what's kind of kind of caught up, I suppose what's caught, up, caught up with Axl Rose is probably a, a different than what is caught up with Metallica or something or, or, or the heavier bands. But like I think I'm not sure the heavier bands fit in nowadays. And, and you know, there is heavier bands out there, by the way. I just don't know who they are. I'm talking about the new ones, obviously, because I don't go and check them out because because I'm turning into the the, the father, um, uh, the idea of the father where you're, uh, everything's all noise and everything sounds the same. Uh, and we all do that after 26, by the way. So if you're younger than 26, you've got that to look forward to. If you're older than 26, you already know what I'm talking about. But it doesn't, you know, my nostalgia to those bands doesn't, because there's a certain amount of nostalgia to bands, but there's a certain amount of loyalty that you have for them. Um, and I think that's what I mean by the Kurt Cobain coming along, that he blew all that out of the water, that loyalty that I had, for, that I, or the loyalty that I may have thought I had for those heavy bands wasn't there because I realized that 
you know, th that wasn't the music that I was into. It wasn't real music to me. And then when you go into nostalgia for for the old days, I have that inverted commas, but you know what I mean? Like this, as the saying goes, the rose days. And we look at it like in the rose tinted, with the rose tinted glasses, um, kind of wrapped around our memories. You know, it makes it makes all of the crap, you know, disappear. The, the um, uh, you know, at least kind of, it gets, we remember it if we go digging, but we, if we talk about the old days and, you know, you hear older people than me talk about the old days and how they're, uh, they were better than today and there were great days and we could do this, we could do that. And like, we kind of, we kind of be manipulated through our own, you know, selected memories as a, as a kind of protection of, for what have, has gone before, because if I try to remember like the, you know, to say, say I do it as an idea of trying to remember the really good things that I enjoyed when I was young, that's, you know, um, you know, when I was up in, uh, when I was up in, in swords, uh, it'd be out playing football on the field, uh, on the green. Um, that's what it was called. Um, <laughs> like it was in most places or, um, you know, uh, I remember going around to every, every few weeks I was at to buy a Beatles album and I'd cycle around to tape to tape. Now, by that time I was getting to around 14 or 15. So it's, it's slightly different, but, um, when I was in that loan, you know, I, I could hang around with the lads, you know, the, there was a wall that separated our place from, from the, uh, estate over the wall. And we'd all hang around there and was going in there, hang around or, um, uh, going to, uh, down to Barna to stay in a, a mobile home, with my dad and my brothers, um, those kind of memories, you know, they're, they're really kind of memories that if I'm thinking about it, stand out as good memories. But like if I if you kind of think past it, I don't think it, it's to, for me, it doesn't take a lot to think past it. Now, maybe for some, maybe have some have repressed them a lot more than I have. Or maybe I just love bringing them back. But I remember going to the green out to the green to play football in swords. But I remember like always being very conscious of conscious of the rougher estates that were weren't too far away that you know would send us kind of scattering if they if a few of the lads came down because they would you wouldn't know what they do like they were some of them were kind of a bit you know off so they you you'd have to get out of there if you did so I don't know if I was ever maybe when we we're kicking ball around we're actually in the middle of a match you know you're not thinking about those things but when you're just hanging around you I'm always I was always conscious of that being a thing um and you know, even in, in Athlone, when I was over the wall there, th there was a couple of lads out there, and I've talked about this before, that just free reign to kind of hit me whenever they wanted them. They did. You know, so be kind of be bopping around, enjoying my day, and then smack or, um, you know, there was one, there was one, I don't know if I told this before, but there was one um, incident where the footpath, we used to put all I, uh, water on the footpath, so it froze over. Everybody did, I suppose. And you could slide down. But I remember one day one of them lads thought it would be very funny that if I was at the back of the, the we would form the kind of a, a tunnel, you know, our legs were, all our legs were open, we were standing up and the person would slide through, but everybody stepped out and he kicked my legs from me and I smacked my face off the ground. Uh, and they managed to bribe me for not going in and telling my dad, like, but um, I bust my face off the ground. So like, if you really want to dig under, like they're, they're always there. So we're like, we are manipulated in that sense by our own minds into thinking that, Oh, weren't the group? They were great days, you know. And they were, um, where they weren't really, um, they weren't really all that great, I don't think. And I, I, I wonder, are we manip like manipulated by everything when it comes to nostalgia? Like, is is it everything nostalgic and um, a manipulation, whether it's by a a, a large company who produces films, or um, you know. Uh, our, our memories of, of you know music that we thought was great at the time but if we listen to maybe now we kind of go oh Jesus um, or you know like it, it, it rap music is is not a an old uh, music form of music as, as um, obviously it was um, it, it took bits and pieces from other forms of music but um, rap in itself is not a very old type of music but it's changed so much over the years so if you listen to rap music today compared to you know the stuff in the 80s where you know it was really getting getting going the, the difference in 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 the difference is huge in the way it's produced and the beats that are used and obviously the things that are rapping about in general um 
that could be very manipulative where you go and listen to when you're listening to something now um uh, like Kanye or you know whoever it might be I was going to name someone else and I just can't think of anyone <laughs> but then we go back and listen to NWA it's it's a different thing altogether so uh, and, and the same can be said for uh movies the same can be said for Disney's um animations where um you know the the film i think it's called big red is it called big red where it's about menstruation you know and and like imagine that like 20 years ago or 30 years ago that that wouldn't it wouldn't have even been there wouldn't be a chance that disney would touch upon it um when they talked about you know uh, they obviously still have princesses but the princesses are looked at differently or they're written differently where they're not just about finding the prince charming and that's going to solve the problem you know um so the companies are, are sorry the companies are going with it as well like with the times but like our i i, I wonder if our nostalgia is 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 wanting to drag us back all the time it's like um when 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 things like uh, transgender rights are talked about you know um, gay rights are talked about, um, still talking about black people's rights in certain countries, including America. Um, there's there's a side where everybody, and I talked about Josh with a little bit of this, actually. There's a side where everybody wants to go with it and say, of course, we want uh, uh, people to have rights, whether it's transgender, gay people, black people, whatever, um, marginalized communities. And then there's others going, well, what was wrong with the the way it was wasn't it great back in the day you know and it's now it like why what was it great back in the day like and who was it was it just great for you then it was it, it, that's the only worry but was it even great for you like have you has your life improved over the last 20 30 years have you been given more advantages over the past 20 30 years because of who you are and you just want to keep everyone down because it might affect your own see so it, it's it goes way deeper than what i'm talking about um I, I didn't want to go, you know, I'm just talking on a, a more of a, a surface level, obviously being, you know, art and well, not so much surface when it comes to your old days and the stuff that, you know, you might have experienced trauma and stuff and, and you've had to wipe it out or try wipe it out or, you know, go into therapy and stuff for it. That's a different situation. But yeah, I like there's a lot of ways that the that, that nostalgia kind of plays around with our minds, you know, and it's it's uh, I haven't even like. I haven't even got to the kind of second layer of it. You know, this is just what I was thinking about. Um, but even t- even talking about it now, I'm starting to think about all the other things that it could mean. That's ho- why we could be being held back by nostalgia, by our own nostalgia or by collective nostalgia. We could be being held with it back by that. And that's a kind of a scary thing to think that we're being held back by 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 memories of past that we're trying to, uh, you know, that we've erased bits of anyway. If you know what I mean, if that makes any sense, probably. Yeah. Anyway. So I'm sorry, I'm sitting a drink there if you're not watching. <laughs> um so I've decided well, I was this is something I was taught thinking about the other day. Um in a couple of weeks I'll be having someone on to talk about uh this core 30 day kind of uh, focus on growth thing that I've been doing. Um, and they asked me, would I do it as as their guest? Um, and I will have the person on then to to chat about it and how I got on with it and stuff. But so you go, I'm not going to go into it now, but I got to the idea of thinking about maybe I was going to go back and do some, get some uh, therapy. And it's not going to be for, you know, depression or, or, or bipolar or anything like that. It won't be for, uh, things that I've addressed before with the exception of anxiety, which will be touched upon, but um, there's things that need to be addressed with like addressed with the thing. There's been an increase in, in my uh, OCD. If I haven't spoken about my OCD, my OCD is more time related. So it's like, um, if I'm, uh, for example, if I'm cooking my dinner, okay. So, and I'm going to turn the oven on, um, I have to have it. I have to turn it on at twenty. Excuse me, twenty nine minutes past twelve in the in the after. I have my lunch early, by the way, just in case. So if I'm in the house, it has to be turned on twenty nine minutes past twelve. Um. So 
that's just one example, by the way. This is in a lot of different things. I have to be in the gym before nine o'clock, even though the class don't start till ten. Um, it goes right. It goes right through the day of like when I have my cups of tea to you know when I get into bed. When I, you know, I have to be lying on bed at like nine nine o'clock uh, before nine o'clock. Um, quarter to nine actually, <laughs> and uh, you know, there's sort of these little little these le- these little things of OCD that there's, it's starting to increase a little bit and not getting out of hand, but it's very good. Like it very well could. Now that's not to say I would still be a person who would be getting early nights and stuff. I like that. And um, I do like to have my, f- my dinner earlier in the day. And that's, the, you know, I don't need to change that. I know I'm fully aware that that's not the, the reason why, uh, why I'm, um, why I want to go, but, I'm good. I'm not going to do the system, by the way. I'm going to go private because um, I've taught, like, it's amazing now to think I've talked to so many people involved with therapies, with the different types of therapies. And I can contact one of them and see who they know or who they think would be a good fit for I, what I want to get um, uh, looked at. So the thing about the problem, the main problem with the OCD is the fact that it, 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 it will affect the, um, and my anxiety, if I don't say get on, you know, get into my bed or onto my bed by quarter to nine, or I don't get into the gym by nine and all the th- all things can affect, you know, if I cycle in and I get a puncture on the way where I have to walk the rest of the way that affected and at that, I mean, I won't get in for the time I want to get in and, you know, it's sounding silly like that'll derail me for three or four hours. I'll be really, you know, antsy and annoyed and, aggravated by it that I don't that I wasn't on time or I didn't get this done on time and if you don't do one thing on time you're not going to do the next thing on time because things get knocked on you know so it's something I need to address and then it also leads to the fact that like to if I talked about relations uh, like a relationship or relationships with people or, or you know an actual romantic relationship it's it's really very very difficult to approach it at the moment because once you know you let someone else into your life all of those you know times are, are gone up in the air um, um what happens then is the increase in anxiety what happens then is the increase in agitation and you're you're you know you're not feeling right and maybe you start like you know taking a head off someone because they say something that you you know what i mean and it's not because of them obviously it's to do with all the other stuff that's changing as it goes along then like, I don't want it to, like, unfortunately, it has affected the last few times I've, I've you know, seen, seen people and are being seen people. And, like, it's disappointing if you like the person because, you, you know, you like the person and then you, you still have to do it. That's obviously very disappointing. But no matter the person that it is, you don't want to kind of let them down. You don't want to be the one to say, well, listen, this isn't... Uh, this isn't working because you know, and with some people you'll go you'll go into detail. Like it's very hard now for me to start seeing someone without them knowing that I do a podcast. And then if they go, Oh, I'll listen to that podcast, go back and listen to episode one or two, and they'll know pretty quickly uh, all the stuff that I've talked about and what I've have have and had have had going on. So then you you know, you're gonna be honest with them anyway. And tell them that that's the reason. Like the reason is you, you're freaking out um, over things that are minor to everyone else, but to you it's like the end of the world. Like not uh, getting into the gym by nine o'clock, or you know staying up an hour later at night. You know that like it doesn't even like on, in the grand scheme of things, we know and I know that doesn't matter. But like you know in my back of my head or the front of my head, I should say, where everything's kind of kicking off. I don't want to be. Uh, uh, a big, uh, for it to be like that all the time so I think you know this is this is a, a thing that's been going on for kind of years now and you know I, I haven't addressed it because I've always thought if I can just get on top of the uh, you know the, the the moods if I can get on top of the anxiety uh, the rest will kind of look after itself but clearly it's not like and clearly I've obviously been tested for OCD before, which I've been told I I have uh, compulsive um, tendencies. But I, I've never 
addressed it in with the you know with a psychiatrist or a, um, not a psychiatrist a psychologist or a psychotherapist or anything like that and i and i feel now that i probably need to go down that route next to see what i can figure out because it's probably a few adjustments that um like luckily enough i'm not a person who has to wash their hands you know an awful amount of times or turning off and on the lights which it's to do with times and another thing i notice when i am you know because it's to do with time I constantly looking at the time and I'm constantly worrying about what time it is. And I'm, you know, pressing the button on my phone to see what time it is, looking at my watch. Even in the gym, when, when I'm doing stuff, I'm looking up at the the time, even if it's on the stopwatch or, you know, the, on the, yeah, the stopwatch, I guess, where it's the, just the seconds going up, I'm looking up. And that doesn't mean anything. Um, unless you want to get the, the workout done in time. Yes, that does. But I, I mean, it, does, it doesn't mean in context with this, it doesn't mean a thing. So, yeah, I think I'm kind of thinking that like a psychotherapist to be, be the right choice. Um, and like I said, we, you know, I've talked to a few psychotherapists. Um, I've talked to a number of people from the dance and soul, obviously uh, that's an ideal spot to, to 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 get someone because it's just you know 15 minutes on the bike down the down the road just next to the gym that i'm in there and, and you know get it sorted out and like like i said i hopefully hopefully it it won't be a a long process and it'll just be looking kind of at the ocd because i think i generally think the anxiety is a offshoot of the ocd i'll always have anxiety but the the uh, ocd if i if my requirements my ridiculous requirements aren't met in my mind and the OCD, then the anxieties kicks off um yeah so i it's like this when you when you when i sit down and think about like what it's affected it seems to be just those people coming into my life it's the, that's the only thing that seems to be affecting all you know so that needs to be changed because um you kind of feel like you're falling behind things then like uh, I wonder, is it because I turned 40 recently? I'm having these thoughts. <laughs> um, but, you know, there's nothing. There's, I think there's a, a positivity in um, addressing it, like, you know, pointing it out, realizing what it is and addressing it and not, I don't want to dilly dally about it. And 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 because I do that, I've done, I've done that a lot, you know, with, with things where I've thought about things and just kind of, yeah, I'll do that. And then you think about it over and over and you never get anything done. I want to get stuff done. So I can get on to the next thing because, you know, we should have always be going on to the next thing and chasing the next thing. And, um, but we saw other than that, like I'm feeling all right, you know, th there's a, uh, this is just something that's cropped up the last, well, it's been happening the last while, but again, the last few weeks it's come into, into focus again with me. And it's just, I want to, I want to get it sorted. Um, also I wanted to mention, uh, the women's class in uh, jujitsu, if you are listening to this now, who you, if you are someone who wants to, kind of join in or if you know someone who you think would benefit from self-defense and jujitsu uh, uh, we are here in Athlone and fusion training center and uh, we've had some in the last couple of two or three weeks actually it's been great we've had people coming in more and more people coming in signing up to it and um, the numbers are building you know like this that's a great thing about it actually it seems to be that someone will come in and then they'll bring a friend in and we've had a we've had a, a a thing where someone came in, they brought a friend in who brought a friend in. So it's that's the seems how the numbers are picking up through friends. And and that obviously uh, um, it creates a lovely bond then on the mass because there's already if you come into a place, you don't know if you've got someone with you. It's so much easier, but it's also easier to uh, become part of a group that you're not part of yet, because if there's two of you there it's easier to approach people or people will approach you. And they're also like, look, the, 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 the women that I'm training with are also cool at just, you know, chatting people. I've noticed that actually about it. I was like, I'm only putting myself uh, on, you know, on, on view here. Like, but you know, when I went in there, I was so difficult. And I was like, I know I was like 35, you know, I wasn't like some of them are a lot younger than that. Um, and I was like, oh God, I have to introduce myself now. There doesn't seem to be any, <laughs> there doesn't seem to be any problems with the people who I'm who I'm training with now. Um, and I look like it's interesting for me because when I started in jujitsu, like I was uh, starting on my own. You know, it was a group of people there who were at various levels, obviously, but they'd all been in there. I was that my first class. It was just me in there on my first class, and um, you know, to see. 
first of all, for me to train in fundamentals now, to to go back and look up videos for fun, the, the fundamentals, which I'm uh, like, and which we stray away from when we start learning cooler stuff. We think, oh, we did the cool stuff instead. Um, it's great to see, like, train people from scratch. There's like, there's a couple of people in there now who are who are there from the very beginning and have missed one or two of the classes only, you know. And you see them uh, coming on. It, it's it's um, it's such a it's such a great like, you know, it's their um the effort that they're putting in. Um, even we were doing something called the butterfly guard last week, and uh, some one of them came up to me and said, like, oh, I was looking up the butterfly guard on YouTube, and you're like, yes, you know, that's that's the enthusiasm for it. like so. Yeah, they're they're going home and I'm, I'm putting up posts in the, in the group and saying what we're going to w- look at. And then they're going, they're watching it before they come in. Like, that's, that's great. You know, I don't, I didn't even do that. Like, and, uh, but like, you know, there's no, um, it's straight in. Uh, there's never any, like people are, are only still joining in. They haven't done it yet. Everybody's so nice to each other the way they were to me when I started in there. Um, the dynamic of the group is perfect. Like everybody's so sound rug. Uh, nobody minds choking the other person. You know, they know when to tap and when not to, you know, go too hard. And because everybody's different, like it's the same in any group, like everybody's different size, you know? So there's, there's, a, there's, a, we're conscious of not like me, like if I'm six foot two and I'm with someone who's five foot six, I'm not just going to crush down on top of them. Like, you know, you're conscious of, of allowing it to be a kind of a, uh, a fair uh, playing field and you know even getting to see a couple of them roll the other day for I put the I put the clock on for a minute and they rolled for a minute and um it wasn't they weren't trying to kill each other it was very technical uh, I was really like it was really really good and um uh I'm I'm very you know uh you know my mom uh would say uh, that I'm not I don't give myself enough credit for things you know um and that's probably true and it, that's probably true for a lot of people I suppose but and like you know, Martin, uh, my coach uh, said it to me like I should feel very proud for what, you know, for it, because, you know, I wanted this to happen. I asked Martin, he said, give it the green light. And I know he was like, you know, we put it on for a few weeks, see how we get on. And like, you know, the people keep coming in and, you know, I am very proud of it. Um, But like, it's not the it's not a pride of of um, uh, what, what, what I'm trying to say. It's not a pride of. Oh look, this is what I started. It's a pride of seeing this like really, really cool group of people uh, wanting to come in and do something positive and uh, do it in the right way, you know, and and be sound and meet, meet nice people and create a little a little group uh, of uh, of like minded people who are just wanted who want to do something positive and just get on with it. And uh, it's it's I'm I'm loving it. So if you do think of of somebody um, that might want to do it. Uh, tell them to give uh, Fusion Training Center uh, a shout, and they'll, uh, you know, you set up a free, uh, a free trial, and you come in for a class with whatever we're going through that day. And um, yeah, it, that's the thing we said. Like, if people miss miss classes, it doesn't matter. Those things that they missed will come around again. It all the things come around again in, in one way or another, and in, with different like sp- specifics and stuff. So yeah, that's good. So listen. I hope you enjoyed that little um, solo uh, episode. I did. Um, I appreciate everyone for listening to me talk for 50 minutes, which is surprisingly tough uh, <laughs> a lot of the time. I hope everybody um, understands what I was saying about nostalgia. I, I, I went off on one because I had it all written down, and then all this other stuff came into my mind. But anyway, if you like Jurassic Park, good for you. If you like Ghostbusters, good for you. It's not a good film. I know. It's like it's good if you like it. Um, it's all it's all good. If the nostalgia is good, then look, I hope that the, the nostalgia carries through 20 years later and you watch the thing or listen to the thing and it's still good for you. That's all that matters. I want to thank John for um his uh his patience and his technical ability. I want to thank my mom, my dad, my granddad, Jer and Calvin, as always. Uh would you please uh if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel, the weekly weekly, and we're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And um, when it comes to the podcast platforms, we're on Spotify, Apple, Anchor, Google Podcasts, etc. You can also su- subscribe to them, I should say. I never say that. And if you are on Apple Music or on Apple, you can leave a review or give us a star rating. Um, one star or five stars, whatever you want. Be honest. Um, so, yeah, thanks to everyone. Uh, I've got a special guest next week. 
I'm not going to tell you about now, but I'm really looking forward to it. But until then, I hope you all have a lovely week. And yeah, see you next Wednesday. Bye.